Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models Design of Experiments. And here we're going to do a little four part mini series on estimability. In the first video, we're going to look at necessary and sufficient conditions for a function to be estimable. As a reminder, the setting is we have a model y equals x beta plus some error term. The, of course, the standard assumptions, the mean is zero, the variance is sigma squared, the covariances are zero. And here we're going to let the design matrix be n by p. So we have n observations, and there's going to be p parameters in the beta vector. Now, in, a, in my regression playlist, we derive the least squares estimates for the betas. And see, see that video for details. Um, here we're, uh, are the normal occasions. Here, here are the normal equations right here. So when you're doing uh, least squares estimation, you take derivatives of this, you're going to end up with this equation. And this is the standard equation. You have a vector of unknowns. The x's are knowns. The in the y's are known. So to solve for this, if the rank is p, so that means full column rank, we have a unique solution for the beta. And that's just, you just take the inverse of x transpose x to both sides, and then you get this. However, when the rank of x is less than p, there's an infinite number of solutions to this equation. And one of them is this, the, the, and, the, and it's the least squares estimate. We actually derived it in the video before this. It's x transpose x generalized inverse, x transpose y. So where, where this is the generalized inverse. And I have a video called generalized inverse. I'd recommend that you watch. So we can't uniquely estimate the individual beta parameters. And we highlighted that in the, in the previous video in this playlist. So, if you can't uniquely estimate a beta parameter, how do you estimate them? Well, you start creating restrictions or subsets of these, you know, individual beta parameters. And here, it's, we take uh, linear combinations of the betas. So, lambda... Uh, prime or lambda transpose is just a vector of, of numbers and then when you make this uh, vector product out you get you know linear combinations of these betas and we want to find which linear combinations can be uniquely estimated and then that's really the overall big topic of estimability so a definition is this function, linear combination of the betas, so this function is estimable if a vector rho exists such that a linear combination of the y's, let me rephrase that, the expected value of, the line, of a linear combination of the y's is unbiased for this function. Then it's, then it's considered estimable. Now theorem 1, the function is estimable if and only if there exists a row such that the lambda is this, row prime x. With that, and this means it's a linear combination of the row space of x. So let's prove that. And if and only if means we have to assume this is true and prove this, and then we assume this and is true and then prove the back. So let's go this way. Let's assume lambda beta is estimable. That means an un biased estimate of a linear combination of the y's exist for this function for some row. Now thus, lambda beta is equal to this, right? Because we're assuming it's estimable. But this expectation can go in to be this and expected value of y is x beta. And so we have this. But since this is true for all beta, for any beta, then we know that that makes lambda transpose equal to rho transpose x. And that's what we wanted to show. Now, let's, now let's, it, let's go back the other way. Let's assume this is true, that lambda prime is part of the rho space of x. So then we have uh, lambda transpose beta, but let's re 
replace lambda with this but x beta is the expected value of y and then that expectation can come back out and we get this so look there is an unbiased estimate of a linear combination of y's that equals this function so it is estimable and so we've proved it both ways now theorem 2 the function is estimable if and only if this equation has a solution for u so what that says that lambda is actually in the column space of x transpose x so this is another necessary and sufficient condition so let's go back this way so let's assume this is true and prove that it's estimable so uh, assume this has a solution for u so let's look at lambda transpose beta but since lambda can be replaced with this now don't remember that transpose so we have to transpose this and we get this but x beta is the expected value of y and let's untranspose these and we get this right if we transpose that in it reverses and we get this but this is a vector so let's just call that row let row equal x u then we get this but this is what we were calling row and this expected value can come back so we get this so the expected value of this linear combination of the y's does equal this so it's estimable now let's go this way so let's assume that lambda transpose beta is estimable then we know by theorem one that lambda can be represented like this now in theorem one we put transpose around everything but this is the same so now let's look at some facts so the rank of x transpose x is actually the same of the rank of x that's a well-known theorem but now this one remember well let's go back to this so this these this is a matrix and if we add a column the rank can grow by one or can stay the same if that column is a linear combination of the other columns right so here I'm saying that we added lambda and the rank did not increase and the reason is this we're a, oop, it's estimable so lambda is actually a linear combination of the columns of x transpose right so adding this dependent vector into this doesn't change the rank right so this this is what so going from here to here is by assumption oh and th we're gonna this is an augmented matrix like when you add a vector to an existing matrix so let's look at this let's examine this rank first of all so we have x transpose x and we've added this column lam uh, lambda you know it's another it's a vector so this augmented matrix can be written like this right if you were to take this product you get this augmented matrix but the rank of the product of matrices is always less than the rank of any one of those so that's the so this is this is bigger than this this but this right is equal to the rank of x transpose x so we have that relationship now here we have the rank of now okay, so that's one statement this is the next one the rank of x transpose x if we were to add a column the rank can either grow by one or stay the same so if we add this column the rank is greater than or equal to this rank okay but now we've just shown that this rank is bigger than this and we've shown the rank of this is less than that less than or equal so that says they have to be equal so the rank of x transpose lambda is equal to the rank of x transpose x but how can those be equal and the only way is if this lambda is a linear combination of the x's so this implies that lambda is, lambda is a linear combination of columns of x transpose x which means mu is a solution to this right if lambda is a linear combination of, of these columns means there's some vector exists 
that makes this true. Well, and that's what we wanted to show. So TAM2 is proof. Now let's look at a quick example. We have yij equal to mu plus tau i plus epsilon. So this is the effects model. We have two groups or two treatments and two observations within each treatment. Now matrix representation, it looks like this. And the design matrix is a column of ones, one, one, zero, zero, you know, zero, zero, one, one. The beta vector is this. And let's look at the row space. Now the row space are the vectors going this way. But these two call these two rows are the same, so we can kind of get rid of one. And these two rows are the same, we can get rid of one. And then the way my mind works is I, I like to make them columns. So th these are the rows of X, but they're in columns. So to look at the row space, we need a linear combination of these, which is this. So th this is the row space of X. Now we ask, is mu estimable? The answer is no. So mu is, it, you know, we have to create this linear combination which then for lambda we put one zero zero, right? Because then when we do this multiplication, we it picks off mu. But notice that one zero zero is not in this row space. There's no values for row one and row two that we can make that makes this one zero zero. So lambda is not in the row space. Is mu plus tau one estimable? And the answer is yes. So to create mu plus tau 1, we need a lambda vector of 1, 1, 0. That way when we do this multiplication, we get this. But notice that 1, 1, 0 is in the row space of x. So mu plus tau 1 is estimable. Now this is according to theorem 1. According to theorem 2, if lambda is in in the column space of x transpose x, then it's estimable. So the column space here, um, notice that column 2, column 3 add to column 1, so that's a dependent. So it, it really is just the rows, the column space of these two vectors. But if you notice, it's, it's really the same. It's just a constant multiple. So they're actually equivalent. So the column space of x transpose x in this example is actually equal to the row space of x. Well, one other point is for theorem 1, it says if this relationship is true, then lambda is estimable. And if you were to just solve this out in this case here, it's also going to impose another restriction, and that's lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2 plus lambda 3. And every design matrix is a little bit different. But this, if you were to just solve it by hand, I encourage you to do that. Mainly just practice and understand really what's going on. This is another restriction that has to hold. And if we look at our lambdas that we use, this one, look, lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2 plus lambda 3. So this, it meets this restriction, but then you also have to check to see if it's in the row space. But this one, didn't meet the restriction, right? Lambda 1 does not equal lambda 2 plus lambda 3. So we know instantly that this isn't going to be estimable without even checking if it's in the row space of x. Well, anyway, we have more. We have three more videos on estimability and, uh, you know, hope you come along. So I really enjoyed this video. Uh, please like it if you did and subscribe so you don't miss the next channel, the next video. Thank you. Bye.